A big hello to everyone around the world and welcome to our session Unlocking the Power of Agile. We are delighted to have InfoBIP's Vice President of Engineering here, uh, Damir Prusas, to discuss how InfoBIP built a DevOps solution that powers one million messages a day. Firstly, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Christian and I was born and grew up in Germany. I have over 10 plus years experience in Agile software development and currently I'm the managing director of Venture Croatia which has offices located in Germany, Turkey and Croatia. Uh, Venture recently became um, a partner of InfoBIP as well but we are uh, one of the fastest growing uh, Atlassian Platinum Enterprise Solution partners around the globe. Last year in 2019 we received the Atlassian Solutions Rising Star Award. Um, Damir, Tell us about InfoBIP and your roles, role as Vice President of Engineering. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, InfoBIP is a company founded in Croatia in 2006 and it started as a small startup and it took us almost six years, seven years to reach $100 million revenue. Last year we have reached more than $700,000. So, um, Today, InfoBIP is dealing with a communication platform as a service, providing omni channels on any known, so to say, communication channel, uh, WhatsApp, SMS, Facebook Messenger, Telegram, you name it. Right? Uh, last year, we, uh, we have to our portfolio added also the SaaS uh, offering, SaaS offering uh, from the conversational point of view, uh, from moments point of view, meaning uh, customer engagement and also chatbots. Um, just to say, uh, InfoBIP has received four times in a row Rock Award for the best A2P provider uh, in the world, uh, voted by majority of the big mobile network operators. My role is very simple. My role is the, as a VP of engineering to lead that department of 650 engineers and to develop InfoBIP products and platform. In one small correction, it's up to one billion messages a day. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, good, so um, I've heard that two thirds of the world's population have received a message powered by InfoBIP. Um, maybe uh, you can talk about the scale of your reach and how your team support it. Absolutely, that's correct, right? Yeah, that's something that we are proud of. I think that two major factors contributed to such a reach. One thing is that InfoBIC has been creating over the years uh, the contracting partnership with mobile network operators and today we may say that 650 mobile network operators are partners. So we are using their reach and uh, through their telecommunication networks to reach the end users. That's the one and the second one is also very important that over this period we have built the private infrastructure, private cloud infrastructure, and also building internal capability, capabilities and knowledge to, to support uh, uh, over 40 different locations of our data centers around the globe. Amazing, yeah. Um, you're using Atlassian products for both Tev DevOps and ITSM. Can you tell us about your current Atlassian environment? Sure. Um, it's pretty straightforward, I would say. Um, as kind of industry standard, we are using Jira. Uh, all our developers are using Jira. Um, and also for the documentation part, we use Confluence. And we use Confluence on three different uh, perspectives. One is the technology that we are building our products. The second one is uh, products that we are describing them well, uh, starting from the architecture till the tiny details. And the third one is uh, our setup, organizational setup among the teams. And of course, we also have uh, Ops Genie, which comes at the end, so there's a software development lifecycle as a feedback through the alerting system. And for the internal ticketing, we are using uh, Jira Service Desk. Okay, uh, great. Um, are all uh, your Atlassian products integrated? Pretty much. I, I would say that um, integration comes with two faults. 
Uh, one is the process integration and the second one is tooling itself. So um, pretty much all, all our products or all our tooling or tools that, that we use are serving kind of to the process that should be as thin as possible and should be as fast as possible, right? And then from the tooling perspective, yes, definitely. And uh, also Jira help us a lot with the workflows and we're trying to unify all, all the workflows within the organization. So pretty much I would say they are tightly connected the, with the ways of working and with the ways how we deliver software. So from that perspective, we are happy with that, I would say. One interesting question as well. Uh, are you integrating with other non-Atlassian tools to perform DevOps? Absolutely. Uh, all modern companies are integrating different tools. And also uh, within our environment, especially important is, is continuous implement continuous deployment and continuous integration. And uh, of course, uh, we are using the Bitbucket as well, uh, not to mention before, uh, as our repository. And for that part, our, our pipeline for continuous integration goes towards the Jenkins and towards our Artifactory. And then we have internal tools for the deployment that we've developed as well over the years, which serves as, you know, as a primer uh, gate towards our data centers and also serves as our inventory. And of course, there is a, another uh, tool set like monitoring tools, like in, uh, what we use, uh, Grafana, Prometheus, New Relic and such things that are pretty much tied with, with a complete Atlassian stack. Um, what were some of the biggest obstacles you faced in bringing DevOps into your organization? Yeah, uh, if I recall, then um, of course, there's all, always many obstacles, but uh, establishing end-to-end -end process really, uh, that flows through the organization. That is always a challenge. And uh, try to apply the metrics, how to measure if you are good enough, if you are, you're never good enough, but if your, your delivery pipeline works well and uh, you are satisfying the needs from, from, from the market, that's something. So measuring the uptime, measuring the service level objections, uh, measuring the cycle time, that all needs to be established and comes also with, 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 a, with a cultural shift that people are getting used to it and people are buying in and people are actually doing it at the end. One other topic, how would you describe your process for ITSM? It's very simple, right? <laughs> I would say it's, it's a pretty standardized um, ITSM, um, a little bit based on the ITIL, but I would say that we try to make it uh, as fast as possible. So. Um, to describe it well, I would say that there is a lot of prevention rather than saving you know, the day. Uh, prevention comes that, uh, through our network operating center where we monitoring our production on different ways. We monitor traffic, we have alerting tools as well as mentioned. And um, ultimately it might happen sometimes that clients uh, feel a degradation of service or feel disturbances. In that case we have um, support people um, they are uh, monitoring uh, the client's operations and uh, according to follow the sun principle. So we have supporting people on all the continents uh, except Antarctica as well. And uh, so if they cannot solve the customer problem, actually they are contacting the developers on duty and uh, they are trying to make a remedy as fast as possible. If not, actually the Jira ticket is uh, generated for the systemized solution. Let's follow up on this. Uh, when a service goes down, how does your team establish processes and practices to respond, resolve, and learn from those inc incidents? Of course, there is an incident management process. Uh, first, on the frontier towards the clients are support people, and uh, they are supporting and monitoring operations in production. And if they cannot help customers, and usually they do, and then they contact uh, developers on duty. Um, they try to make a remedy as fast as possible and um, if there is a need for a systematic solution later on then Jira ticket is generated in the system and we work on that on, on, on the following sprint. And if the uh, need is that we follow, it, follow up that uh, much quicker then it's taken immediately into the, into the team's backlog. That's one thing. The second thing is post-mortem where we also have our site reliability engineers who are trying to see overall uh, architecture and try to fill the gaps 
and uh, hiccups and bottlenecks in the in the process, not just in the process, but also in, in, in working production, and uh, sitting together with architects, and we are trying to to to, to ask why why and why that happened and will it happen again, and then we have conclusions out, out of it. Okay, great. Uh, what about change management? What are the processes that help uh, ensure that change is effective? I would say change management is our standard process. It's what, what we do. Uh, and under change management, we consider that any type of change that, that is imposed on the organization, on the teams, they are taking it in into the backlog, into the product backlog. And meaning product, meaning the, any type of uh, idea, any type of feature, any type of user story, tasks, bug, whatever it takes. It's pretty much the standardized workflow. Unless the urgent need is, is, is imposed on the organization, then we, we, we do the fast tracking. But other than that, actually, um, it's tracked again through the JIRA. Uh, uh, code changes are, are put into the bit, bit bucket. And uh, of course, we always tie this, this change with the JIRA ID so that we can track it later on. Uh, and all, just for learning purposes, but also for compliance purposes. So, and then it's pushed towards production. Great, thanks uh, for this. Uh, so let's take a more general view maybe. Uh, what company initiatives is your team working towards? So security compliance, product speed to market, CI, CD, new employee growth, remote distributed workforce, etc. And uh, how does Atlassian play a part in that whole story? Yes, all of them actually. But I would just say that uh, recently Infobip uh, became a unicorn. So our, our value passed uh, $1 billion. Uh, and um, I believe that we are preparing a lot to go uh, publicly, to go with the IPO. And of course the perspective changes in, in that sense. So there will be a lot of initiatives according uh, towards the compliancy, uh, towards the auditing, right? And also we're working a lot to put full attention on security because that's important for our clients. So data protection is uh, also uh, one of the priorities uh, for us at that period. Work from home distributed uh, force, that's for sure. We are all working from home since February and um, at least for the engineering department, but all the other companies on the 67 different countries in the world. Um, we are on 10 different R&D locations as well. So uh, we are integrating our products uh, from, from home and uh, it goes very well, I would say. We are very, very much surprised with that. And of course, these uh, digital tools and digital toolings and automation help us basically to stay on the track. Without the tool, right tooling and the right process, uh, we wouldn't be able to, to deliver. What, what is your vision of successful DevOps implementation? Um, for me, uh, DevOps is going beyond methodology or beyond the process itself. Uh, to me, it's, it's, it's important to understand that this is the end-to-end -end game, really, to optimize the uh, process from development and operations perspective, where this ops part should be you know, taking as less time as possible in, in that process, meaning that we need to optimize all all that is possible to optimize, actually. Yeah. So if we are super efficient uh, and safe with our monitoring alerting system and uh, this time to repair is quite small, right? So we have more time to bring value to the customer and that's a kind of philosophy. And again, the tooling, the process, the people and everything comes together. To me, that is the kind of vision of the DevOps. Sure, sure. Um, nice. Uh, what are some of the tools and processes uh, that you are putting in place to support this vision actually? Yeah, uh, what, what we mentioned so far, of course. Um, in addition, we are looking always for, for the tools that help us to, to speed up and to be more adaptable because those are the, the two key words that, that uh, kind of agile organization is consisted from. Um, from the process perspective, we are adopting less frameworks, which is a large enterprise scrum scaling, to scale operations beyond the team level, to scale them on the portfolio level. And uh, you know it, Christian, as well, that uh, we are prototyping it with the manager as well, how to basically build this portfolio, how to prioritize those items, different kind of items that are coming up, 
and especially within, within this dynamic, crazy dynamic market, that uh, priorities knows to change uh, on a weekly basis. Okay, yeah. That's nice that we have you there <laughs> and we can support you. Um, what are the top takeaways uh, you hope your audience will walk away with? Yeah, try to mention it several times. I think uh, if you really want to get efficiency or the, in the organization, um, um, try to be relentless, really relentless uh, in um, producing the efficient end-to-end -end flow and uh, give people time to reflect on it and continuously improve the system. And of course, use the best possible tooling that you have. We are lucky basically that uh, we have established that process over, over the several years back and the investment into these areas and these factors uh, returns multiple times. Yeah, thank you, Damir, a lot. This was uh, really a, a great session and uh, it's really a pleasure to work with you together as well. Um, so we had a, a great in-depth look into InfoBIP and what InfoBIP does. Thank you to everyone and uh, we hope that you walked away with some great insights. Uh, take care. Keep safe and bye-bye. Thank you, bye.